Welcome back, everyone, to Grand Tactician the Civil War as we continue this Confederate campaign. It is May 14th of 1863, and we have just completed Diplomacy 4 as a policy, which is going to push our British intervention up. It's not going to happen overnight, but that 52% should start getting into a range where we might possibly see British intervention, and that could be enough to help us end this thing. In the meantime, we have the ability now to go for Diplomacy 5. Uh, but I don't think we're going to do that quite yet because now we have the uh, options here to do a few things. And Industrialization 4 is one of them. Um, but I think we might go for you or for Colored Troops now. You know what? Boy, tough choices. We're going to go Diplomacy again. Because uh, what this allows us to do now is uh, we can actually invest heavier into diplomacy. So let's go ahead and go to our finances. Uh, and now we have the ability to pour even more money into this, which is going to just be a massive amount of money. Uh, and I think it probably means we need to cut back on just about everything else. But pouring more money into that is going to drive this number up further. So we'll see what happens. All right, we're going to move Joe Johnston with the Army of the Shenandoah up out of Charleston, West Virginia, put them up toward Grafton. Uh, let's go ahead and upgrade this supply depot and start getting supplies to flow into that area there. Uh, I really want to try and draw his army into something if I can. So we're going to get a little aggressive with Ewell's Corps here and make a move on Harrisburg see what happens he's gonna have to draw some of these guys up there and then maybe we send the other corps to try and hit these troops that have been pretty much parked on Baltimore not doing much of anything lately his national morale's back up to 38 it was 34 when we began recording this episode okay so Yule has arrived uh, in the Harrisburg vic vicinity here we're gonna Send them across the Susquehanna River. Uh, this Susquehanna River is really shallow. You could, in a lot of places, you can just walk across it. It is not a navigable river uh, for ships and things like that. Uh, looks like we've got Johnston in Grafton. Uh, so we've made those two moves. We're going to see what he decides to do here uh, because he's probably going to have to hold in Pittsburgh. If he moves east to engage Jewel, I'll send... Johnston North if he moves up from here and it looks like he's going to uh, then we can move yeah he's going to send at least one army or at least one corps up I didn't see what the numbers were for that one but it looks like we're about to take Harrisburg so it'll be interesting to see what he chooses to do we might get a battle on the Gettysburg battlefield out of this we haven't had one of those yet would very much like to have that happen British intervention still sitting tight at 52. It hasn't budged. And I believe that we have taken Harrisburg. We have. All right. We've got to get some supply going here. So we still hold Cincinnati and Covington. Uh, we've now taken Harrisburg. His national morale is teetering on the brink at 31. If we could win a big victory on northern soil, or if we could finally drive these guys out of Kentucky, that might be enough to get this done. But boy, is Pittsburgh looking awfully tempting right now. Uh, how's our supply situation? It's okay. They're unhappy, but you know what? I don't care. We just need to win the war. So let's make a move on Pittsburgh. So major pressure right now on Pennsylvania. We've taken their capital. We're going after one of their two largest cities now. And I wonder if taking Pittsburgh might be enough to drop this thing. Because he dropped seven points of national morale when I took Harrisburg. Taking, Har taking Pittsburgh might be enough to end the war. That would be something. So we're going to go ahead and watch Joe Johnston make his move here. I'm sure that he's going to... Probably backtrack one of these armies. Oh, Yule's Corps. Is this the one in Harrisburg? It is. Oh, we're going to have our work cut out for us. Outnumbered two to one. He he hopped on the rails and got 
the first corps in the army of Lincoln there, and then another forty-one thousand man army that's about a day away. Which means we've got one day with even odds where we can win this battle, and we desperately need to win that. Well, we are disappointingly not on the Gettysburg battlefield. I really would have liked that, especially since we're into June of 1863 and getting close to the actual date of the Battle of Gettysburg. Uh, so here's the really good news. We can advance pretty far onto this map, which is exactly what we needed. And it's 3 o'clock in the morning, so everything favors us in terms of being able to try and win this battle before his reinforcements arrive and turn the tide heavily against me. Uh, so the question, of course, becomes where is his army? And there's a good chance that it's going to be over here on the left somewhere. Maybe up in here somewhere. So I may, I may deploy right in here and try to advance straight through. Oh, it's also possible he could be up here, though. So that's where it gets tricky because we don't know where he is. Okay, well, here's the answer to the question. They were coming down from up here. Uh, we just ran into scouts, the lead elements of his army. So we're going to go ahead and start turning to face that threat just as quickly as I possibly can. We have to be aggressive here because we can't wait for him to attack us. Okay, we're engaging right here. We've got our Williams guns up on the fence. Those are kind of a, an early form of a Gatling gun. They're going to get some quick action here and hopefully cause some decent casualties on his cavalry. So far, we've taken some losses, and that was primarily my cavalry that ran into him when they were scouting. All right, I've sent my cav up to just kind of check all the other entrances. We've done that now. We've got two divisions on the line, one in reserve. Hopefully, see some decent combat out of these guys. I'm going to tell Ramser to call his skirmishers in and get them up on the line. Alright, let's send skirmishers out over here so they can deal with this battery. Alright, this is an important battle. We need to drive these brigades back and push him out of here before we... Let's just take a look real quick and see. Um, looks like the estimate right now is 24 hours away. So we've got the whole day to fight this out. So far, uh, we're starting to gain on him in terms of casualties. Looks like morale's about the same. Oh, we just drove off a brigade. Perfect. Good start. We're driving off the battery. Those Williams guns did their job. They're almost out of ammo, though, so we got to pull them back. How's my artillery doing? They're all firing. We're low on ammo on the artillery, though, too. All right, let's start pushing forward with the brigades now. Let's get get a couple of them up on the line. Bibb County boys right here. Got the Seminole scalpers. Want to get them up on the fence too. Over here we've got Wharton's brigade. All right, I think we'll sit tight here for a little while. We've definitely got the advantage. high ground. I like it. And the casualties are showing why we like it. Plenty of time to win this thing before the reinforcements arrive. A 
Not even 8 o'clock in the morning. Alright, you know what? This is when we now send Pryor's division, who's in reserve, up to just bust through his line and turn this thing into a route. Here we go. Hit him, boys. Now we're going to keep pushing through. Oh, dang. One of my brigades went all the way through. The other two haven't been able to get through this Union brigade here that's being stubborn. There we go. Uh, Steven Hurlbut. He was a division commander at Shiloh. Not today, Hurlbut. Not today. I believe he's a southerner by birth. Look at those casualties now. Oh, that's lovely. We might be able to capture some of these units. Just charging in there now and turning this thing into a very one-sided battle. How do we lose the objective? Oh, he snuck in around behind me with some units and grabbed the objective. That's all right. We're turning this thing into a major victory anyway. I knew he had to have more units somewhere else that we weren't seeing. Yeah, we just caused one of his brigades to wipe out. All right, we'll send a division down there to go grab the objective now. Because it doesn't look like we've done enough to win this thing. Well, it looks like he was coming to join the party anyway. He's sending those units forward, so we're going to hit him out here right near Pine Mountain. He's definitely going to have the high ground on us here. And our leading wave might run into some trouble here. That's Greg's brigade. Going to send the cotton balers over this way to hit these guys. I do have Garnet's cavalry going down to regain the objective. Main thing is we got to keep pushing because we need to win this battle before those reinforcements arrive. So Wharton's brigade's coming up the hill now. Cotton balers behind them. Who was wounded? Greg. Oh, oh, and there they go. They panicked after they lost their commander. That's okay. We're all right. Oh, they're laying down. Look at that. Oh. They're getting fancy with their strategy now. We've got a full division coming up, up, up the hill behind these guys, though. I'm going to start taking some casualties. I'm going to actually send the cotton balers up here to the side. I think we're going to need to call our other division over too. And maybe the artillery while we're at it. It's only one Union division we're dealing with. We can handle that. We've inflicted 10,000 casualties. That's nearly half his army. Whew. Warden's Brigade is taking a beating, though. Because these guys are firing on him, too. Alright, that's okay. That's okay. Another fresh brigade coming up. Now we're going to start throwing them back. Gifts divisions demoralized. That's okay. Oh, he's got more brigades up here than I thought. He's got two divisions back here. So 
but we might need a little more help. I'm going to go try to grab this battery, though, while it's moving. And then we can swing around and hit him. Beautiful. Hit that battery. We're a little bunched up here. I don't care for that. It's just kind of the way it worked out. Florida lead launchers have taken 800 casualties. So Alexander's brigade is going to leapfrog them. I'm going to give them deadly volley. Which they'll immediately start leveling up. Alright, how we doing? Artillery's on the way. Edmund Kirby Smith's division's on the way. We're about to grab the objective. And now that we've wiped out this battery, we can come in and surprise these guys. Say hello to my flanking friend. Oh, I didn't want you to charge in there, though. Ah, uh, Tolliver. And I believe that is how his name is pronounced, not Talia Farrow. I think it's Tolliver. Ah, uh, I did not want him to do that. I wanted him to stand there and shoot it out with those guys. Oh, now I... Porter Alexander is going to do the same thing. He's going to charge in. All right. Well, this better work. All right, it worked. <laughs> All right. All is forgiven, boys. All is forgiven. You won the battle. We ended up with about 3,500 casualties, which 20 minutes ago I wouldn't have thought was going to happen. I would have thought we would have gotten away with far less, but we just caused two more brigades to get whipped out. 16,000 casualties, 68%. Wow. On Union soil, that's huge. This may be the end for the Union this episode. Holy cow. I didn't just defeat him. He surrendered his army. John Dix surrendered his army, or at least the portion of the army that was on the field against me. What does that mean for the war? He was already at 31. If he drops below 25, the war ends. He's got to take at least a couple of point hit here. Surrendering on Union soil, fighting for a, for a Union state capital. So let's see. His, morale, his national morale only dropped by 0.7%. It's a little disappointing. All right, in the meantime, Army of the Shenandoah appears ready to march unopposed into Pittsburgh. The city's starting to fall. Could this be enough? How much of a morale hit will it be to lose a major industrial center like Pittsburgh? We're going to find out here in just a second. That's it. Taking Pittsburgh won the war. That's just too many points he couldn't handle. Losing that, that dropped him to 23. The war is over. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So here's what I want to do now in wrapping this up. Oh, I guess we might not get to. We are fighting for independence. Yeah, yeah, we know what you're fighting for. Um, French intervention was at 80%. We had never seen French intervention in the game. Uh, so that there was a good chance that was going to happen happened had we not won the war when we did. Uh, so it's too bad. I would have liked to seen that unfold. Uh, so here we go. Final numbers. How did he end up with only 210,000 men in the field? Look at those casualties. 262 for me, 463 for him. That's actually really fairly comparable when you add the number together to the real casualties in the war, at least deaths, not total casualties, but deaths. Uh, so I do want to go back and inspect the campaign, though, because I want to look at uh, some of the units that really kind of did the most for us in this war. So starting with the Army of Tennessee, the Kentucky Colonels had two battle stars. 29th Tennessee Infantry had two battle stars. Ruhr Valley Brigade had two. Walker County Rangers had two. Gruber's Guard had two. Uh, so a number of units there. 
Gulf Shore Gators with four battle stars in their time in the field. And they were only, were they really only eight months in the field? No, they, they go back all the way to May of 61, it looks like. Hungarian Impalers with three battle stars. First Tennessee Heavy Artillery had a battle star. So thus far, it looks like Gulf Shore Gators are the elite among our Army. Now the Army of Northern Virginia. 21st King James, one. First Australian Volunteers. Jonathan Rifles with two. First Victorian Mounted Rifles with one. Unfortunately, the way this war worked out, we didn't really fight that much with the Army of Northern Virginia. It ended up being a lot of fighting in the West because he just didn't, didn't move on us that much in Virginia. He didn't threaten. We, we were really the aggressors there, so not a lot going on. Nobody seems to have had more than one battle star in the Army of Northern Virginia. So on to the Army of the Shenandoah. It's another one that didn't see a lot of action. Fourth Ringgold Brigade had two battle stars, though. Anson County Congregation also with two. I don't think we have any patron units here. Taylor's Brigade with one. Army of the West, which we ended up combining a couple of other armies to form that one. Tucson Rangers had two. El Paso Heavy Gunners had one. Flemish Lions with one. Yancey Independence with one. Yuma Territorial Guards, which haven't been in the Army for a little while, had two. Benning's Brigade with one. Finn Cowboys had one. Willamette Brigade had two. Was nobody coming close to the four that we saw. McGowan's Brigade... Monterey Cattle Wrestlers with two. Thirty or the New York Copperheads had two. Louisiana Tigers with two. Lot of units with two battle stars. And we've got just two more armies to look at. Here's the Army of East Tennessee. First Royal Volunteers had two. Calgary Highlanders with one. McCray's Brigade had two, and then the last one, that's the Hampton Division. So I want to go back for a second. I want to look at that unit, Gulf Shore Gators, with four battle stars. And I want to look at, look, they didn't even have that good of a general. Now, they may have had a, another general that, yeah, because this guy didn't come in until March of 63 uh, to take command. Uh, I want to look at their history, though. First battle was Bowling Green in October. They had 64 casualties and inflicted 10 times as many. Fought a couple more times at Bowling Green. Uh, look at this one here. Another battle at Bowling Green, Kentucky. They took 1,300 casualties, but inflicted over 3,000 in that battle. My goodness. Inflicted another 917, suffering almost 700 at Louisville. So they fought pretty much in Kentucky. Uh, another battle at Louisville, taking another 400 casualties, but inflicting another 1,000. They lost 700 men in March at Covington, inflicted 700. Man, heavily, heavily engaged. I hope you guys enjoyed that series. We are going to take a little bit of a break from this game until the downloadable content comes out. When that comes out, it's called Whiskey and Lemons. It's going to be kind of a role play where you actually take on the role of a brigade commander and that's all you control and you work your way up from there so we'll definitely come back when that happens or if any significant mod or something that really kind of shakes up the game and gives us a reason to revisit it comes about but in the meantime we'll focus on the other campaigns uh, the other series we have going on and i hope you guys have enjoyed this thank you thank you thank you so much for all your support